So this all got me thinking, well, the miniature does it that way. And the beautiful thing about the miniature is it hasn't always done things right and it's not perfect, but it is like three, 400 years old. So there's a lot of wisdom in what it does and why it does things a certain way. And I think actually, side note, when you look at veterans, people who leave the military, what you're getting in that person is someone who's kind of understands three or 400 years worth of wisdom. Hey everyone, welcome. This is the Delta Pod. I'm Dave. Um, today, we're going to be talking about the importance of definitions. Most of us haven't defined core terms, taking a position, and as such, the world and those around us define those core positions, terms, or environments for us. We are settling on unconscious assumptions rather than engaging with our environment and defining things. This whole kind of trail of thought comes from my days in the military. So in the military, you're often working with large teams, potentially like tens, dozens, hundreds, sometimes thousands of people where when you're planning something and then you've got to brief them on something, you've got to be able to communicate it in a very clear, unambiguous manner. And as a result, there's these things called effect verbs. So if I want someone to go and do something, I might give them a verb, uh, describe a, use a verb to describe what I want to do. Those verbs, yes, there's a definition in the dictionary, but they are, the military and all NATO militaries really have got their own lexicon, got their own definitions for key verbs. A good example here is, so if I'm briefing lots of people and I give you your mission and I tell you, right, I'm going to destroy the enemy position, I could equally say, go defeat the enemy position. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, what an effect verb is, you might think destroy and defeat, same thing. But actually they have subtle but quite important differences in that ultimately destroy means go, go over there, completely dominate the position and like reduce the combat effectiveness right down to a really, really low number, like 5%. Ultimately, you've got to remove their ability to affect the battlefield. Same as defeat, but defeat... Um, they can have a slightly higher combat effectiveness. And I can achieve my objective in different ways because of the detail behind the effect verb. Because the definition has been agreed and everyone's trained on what the definition is for these verbs. So when you just say, go do these things, people know what you mean. And that's like a core part of what a lot of their training, especially as a commander in the military, goes into is how do you communicate? How do we brief people? How do we plan? How do we use these verbs to articulate ourselves? So this got me thinking, and I just want to say those verbs, there's like hundreds of them. Like, for example, go and understand, which is a key one which you would use in like places like Afghanistan. Go and understand that village, that Afghan village. Well, what does understand mean? If you don't define it, and people need to, need to understand what it means. Fix. And I'm going to talk about a whole episode on this. What does it mean to fix something, to prevent something's ability to manoeuvre, or some words to those effect? So this all got me thinking, well, the military does it that way. And the beautiful thing about the military is it hasn't always done things right, and it's not perfect, but it is like three, 400 years old. So there's a lot of wisdom in what it does and why it does things a certain way. And I think actually, side note, when you look at veterans, people who leave the military, what you're getting in that person is someone who's kind of understands three or 400 years worth of wisdom, right? And as it's been indoctrinated into them, they get it. And they might not understand the full 400 years of history behind it, but actually the military does things a certain way because of all the lessons it's learned and the way it, that organisation's grown over time. There's a lot of value in veterans. It got me thinking, in a civilian world, in the world, non-military world, in your corporate workspace, in your family home, there's nearly always misunderstanding. Or let's go further. Let's say there's subconscious assumptions around what people are saying. Now, it, wouldn't be, it would be great if everyone had the Oxford, Oxford Dictionary with them and they could be like, ah, oh, they asked me to wash up. What does that mean? Well, is wash up in the Oxford Dictionary? Probably not, right? So it's these terms and concepts of what need defining, not necessarily the individual words. So, and I would go a step further and say, actually, we need to start defining environments. And, and you look at some of, the, some of the very, very effective leaders in the civilian world, they do this really well. They have everyone on the same page. They understand what's being asked of them and they communicate very clearly. And actually, part as a lot of time go, and effort goes into helping people understand what is meant by certain words, right? 
if I go to one business and they ask me to go and produce something or do something and I go to another business and they ask me to do exactly the same thing, they're probably wildly different what, what the output will be right, or what the expectations are. So it's an interesting point where in your teams, and let's expand teams out, let's go to, so you've got your sports teams, you've got your work teams and environment, you then have um, your families, all those things. We need to look at these key concepts we use routinely around our spaces, our environments, and just take a bit of time and define them. It's important to do it as a team. Yep. And I, and I would say actually this the real value in doing definitions is when you're working or operating with others. There's also a point here where you need to do it for yourself, right? Because what, what is a definition? Well, a definition is a standard. And so if we, if we don't have any standards it's, or don't, if we don't have any definitions, then we're struggling to struggle to have standards. And then when we start setting goals, we're going to struggle to achieve those goals because it's all a bit woolly. We need some kind of almost like some hard-nosed metrics to these things. And this can be quite robotic. This, we might think it's a very robotic way of thinking, Dave. But actually, just thinking about it, taking five minutes to define to you what is hard work. What does it mean? Like what, how do I know when I'm working hard, I'm just working? And how do I know when I'm not working? Right? There's always three levels to this, right? Not working, working, and then hard working. And when we look at performance in a few episodes' time, we're going to look at performance, high performance, and what's below performance, for example. So to find these things, super important for you as an individual. Yep, it, it helps you kind of set a standard in your life of certain things. Like I think hard work's a brilliant one. The other one would be, what's a good night's sleep look like? Have you defined that? Why oh, is a good night's sleep seven hours with a certain amount of REM? Or is it eight hours, nine hours? What, what is a good night's sleep? Or is it none of that, those metrics? Is it, how do I, how do I feel when I wake up? Because sometimes I can have a great night's sleep or I can sleep for a long time but wake up really groggy. So is it is it how I feel when I wake up? Like what is a good night's sleep? Think about that kind of stuff. Without defining things as an individual, I don't know if I've hit the standard, but more importantly, especially as a leader or someone who's operating in a team, if I'm con- if, if I'm asking people to do things and I'm and it's there's this disparity between what I'm asking and expecting versus what I'm getting back. You can almost see that the symptom of this is the definitions haven't been done. You, don't, like you, haven't, you haven't sat down and said, right, this is what this means. Right, this is, this is the, definition of, the definition of X. Onboarding people to teams, having these open conversations, allowing ourselves to be vulnerable and not, here's the key thing, especially in a team, if you're a leader, you could just go and prescribe and say, right, this is what all these things mean. But actually doing it collaboratively gives you so much more benefit to People they actually get behind it. They understand what it means to. Well, this is what we think hard work means. Right, we're gonna. We've got a deadline. We're gonna have to do some hard work here, folks. This is we know what that means. That means we might come in a bit earlier, go back a bit later, have a short lunch break, whatever it means. Right, that's what it means. We're gonna spend a bit of time in a hard work space. This it also there's a whole piece around here about if you're not doing this, if you're not consciously doing this, it's happening subconsciously. So we all have definitions, right? We all have standards that we kind of assume, but because we've not consciously engaged with them, we're not we're not really fully engaging with our environment, we're not fully moving forward into perhaps, I would say, our, our, our best potential. So our standards in life, our movement through life and clarity all matter. I think there's one step I've taken in my life is I, I'm really trying to define concepts and environments are really important. Right, so defining what what does it mean to be in a certain environment, and I think there's a a really powerful question which you can you can repurpose and apply to your life, to your family, um, to your your sports team, to how you do meetings, um, and and uh, it's kind of summed up in one simple question that in my house I've got a blackboard or ball in, in my corridor, and on it, the top of it, it says in this house we dot dot dot, and there's a list of things that me and my kids, two kids, have just sat down and I've said, right, kids, these are things which I think are really important as the leader of the house. This is what I would like to think. And we've discussed what does it mean for these things to actually do these things. I'll read a few to you. So first one, we're a Christian household. Um, so right at the top is we're going to pray too much. What does that mean? It will, might make it a little bit more awkward, right? We'll pray too much. We'll say grace. We'll do those things. And we'll also forgive too quickly. And I think, for me, those are, those are behaviours which are really important um, and help my kids who are nine and six understand that is an interesting journey. 
The next one is respect one another, which, once again, with a nine and a six-year-old girl boy who love a bit of bickering, is not that easy. Third one, very practical one, I'm going to hug all the time. Why hugging? Well, I'm perhaps a bit too English at times, and I feel like the power of a hug is important, especially with my kids. Um, we're going to hug all the time. The other one is, I, I, don't, I, might, I might be an introvert, I'm not sure, being social. So it says, we are social. And we will go out of our way to be social. That's our third one. The next two I really love. Um, one, next one is we are dangerously disciplined, which is perhaps more one for me than the kids because they're kids and they discipline is perhaps not, perhaps not a concept they're fully aware of yet or self-discipline. But being dangerously disciplined is is important, right? And I, and I love that. And it's got on the wall every time I see it. And I'm like, right, yeah, how am I being dangerously disciplined? And the last one is have the courage to try, which is don't be scared to fail. So that's in this house we, that's how I've tried to define what it means to be in this house. How will we go about it? It also, whenever whenever we have guests over, they see it. They're like, this is what it means to be in our house. They get it. And like there's a number of in very interesting conversations which I've had around that board. How are you defining your environments? How are you defining the key definitions in your team, in your life, in your work? And so yeah, I'll let you can you can absolutely borrow that, that in this house we, but you can apply that to your team. So in this team we what? We actually use that phrase in um in my work at Outliers when we run a higher performance program or workshops. And one of the core part of it is helping people define who are we and what do we do? What's the standard? And like defining that helps people move into a, that space of higher performance. So my question to you are, what are the positive habits you want to define in life? And I haven't really spoke too much about positive habits, but everything we do in life, habit is something we do routinely, right? And it's not always positive. It can be negative. Anything we do routinely, right? So if you wake up in the morning and spend 20 minutes scrolling on your phone, and then struggle to get out of bed, and you do it every morning, that's a habit. And perhaps a negative habit, depending on how you view it. What are the positive habits that you need to define in your life, right? So you're defining habits, defining our approach to things. And then I would also go a step further and say, what are the key phrases and terms you need to define in your life? So what are the habit, positive habits you need to define? And what are the key phrases and terms you need to define in your life as an individual? And then if you want to, take it into work, take it into your family and you borrow that phrase, in this house we. And that's a really powerful question because it's defining culture. Culture being people like us do things like this consistently. And if you want to go down the military route, what are the effects verbs that you want to define? Especially in the team space, in the, in the work space. Like, do you need to define what hard work looks like? Do you need to define what a good email looks like? Do you need to define meetings and what a good meeting looks like or need to define how to ask it almost like ask a question of someone like, like the amount of meetings i've been in where there's like questions which are just like someone trying to show off their ego how do we ask questions is that such a core con core concept let's discuss these things let's be a bit vulnerable about them if we need to be so in 2021 i did a film where i dug a hole for 24 hours and it was an interesting, it was a, a film about character and how do we develop, develop character. But one of the, the main lessons I didn't hadn't seen beforehand, but I saw afterwards was there was a number of parameters and standards I set around it. So I had to, it was a three by three metre hole, it's a standard. Um, I was going to dig for 24 hours and I couldn't leave the hole. Those standards made the whole thing. Like living up to that standard made, gave it the hardship equally gave me the gains, gave me the growth as a result of it. So the standards we have in life will result in the in that kind of our growth, in our better kind of clarity around what we're doing and where we're going. Hope you enjoyed that. Trying to bring some of the miniature concepts into a civilian world. Um, but please go and define things. Go and have open conversations with people. Define key words. And if you don't understand what someone's saying, or you think there's a mismatch, perhaps go away and define it together. All the best. As always, please, if you enjoyed this, please share it with your friends. And I'd love to hear um, your answers to that key question being what are the core concepts you're going to define in your life? <laughs>